Saturday night basketball action here in the walk-in closet. Where is Spencerville High School? A great non-conference matchup tonight as Spencerville hosting Ottoville, a battle of unbeaten teams here early in the 22-23 high school basketball season. Good evening, everyone, alongside Dave Bowman. I'm Dr. Chandler. Looking forward to a great matchup. It's a Saturday night special. Not quite a matinee, but it's a pretty <laughs> even game as we take a look at keys in the game tonight. And it's kind of a movie flavor as yeah. we look at this one tonight, Dave. Yeah, movie flavor. flavor. It's great to be your wingman tonight, Patrick. And yeah, let's look at the keys right away. Guardians of the Galaxy. We know the Marvel comics. There's a lot of star and heroic figures in that series. Tonight, we've got them on the floor as well. But the guards for Guardians, it starts with Henline and Schlagbaum. Josh Henline, number three for Spencerville. He leads the way at 17 points per game, and he is the team leader. Great senior leadership from him. He's been the leading scorer every year in high school. For Audeville, number 12, Kellen Schlagbaum. He averages 21.5 points per game, and he is the leader for the Big Green, distributes the ball, gets everyone involved. Secondly, Top Gun, Maverick style. That movie has a lot of action in it. We're going to see it tonight as well. Transition will be a key to tonight's game. Both squads like to get it out and go off a make or a miss. They want to get the ball down the floor and get shots early in possessions. Ottaville averages 60 points a game. Spencerville, 68. And then finally, as you alluded to, it's a Saturday night special, Saturday night fever. Great teams, great programs, great coaches, 4-0. Let's get after it. Let's see what happens, Patrick. Those are your keys to the game. Plenty of potential for Oscar-worthy performances tonight <laughs> here in the walk-in closet. When we come back, it's the tip-off between Ottoville and Spencerville right here on WOSN. Welcome back to Spencerville as the starting lineup is being announced for both sides. The crowd getting on their feet as the Spencerville Bearcats are about to be announced. So we take a look at the Officials for tonight's contest, Tony Schwederman, Charles Witten, and Eric Dickey checking out, making sure everything is called according to plan, or at least according to the rule book, which I know high school fans love to have their own particular thoughts on how that works out. Take a look at the Ottaville Big Green. Great start once again under head coach Keith Utendorf, 4-0 on the season coming out of the Putnam County League. Of course, they are taking on the Spencerville Bearcats, Ottaville Big Green, averaging about 60 points a game, giving up 42. Man, 17 point margin, only four games into the season, Dave Bowen, but that's, that's not bad. No, not at all. It is a short sample size, but you're right. Four games into the season, we're about one fifth of the way through already. Great night, two 4 0 teams. Again, really excited. It's a barometer game. Bearcats also with a great start, 4 0, 1 0 in conference, and they about 17 points a game for their average margin. Again, early season, but Spencerville looking. Pretty sharp in the course of the last time these two teams met. Spencerville got the win there at Heckman Gymnasium, 54 to 51. Uh, we're, we're doing a movie theme tonight, so will the sequel be as good as the first one? I think it will be. It's going to be a dandy as far as uh, all the paperwork and the stats show, but they got to get it done on the floor. Let's see what happens. Here we go. Tip controlled by Big Green. That was Alex Siever of the control, and now inside the ball stripped away. Nice defense there by Dylan Cook as Spencerville forces the first turnover of the contest. Yeah, Cook comes across his help side, gets a hand on the ball, turnover on the big green. Dylan Smith, double teamed, hands it off. And ball is going to trickle out of bounds, and it will go back to Ottaville. Josh Henline, Evan Osting, Dylan Smith, Carter Sudhoff, and Dylan Cook, the starters on the floor for the Spencerville Bearcats. Carter Sudhoff, the hero in last night's contest, coming up with the uh, big win over Crestview. Yeah, and we'll see if there's a little emotional hangover for the Bearcats here early on to shake that loose. Hopefully, again, they, they will play with passion, and Josh Henline being the senior leader, keep that from happening with this squad. Ottaville with the basketball in the hands right now of Carter Horseman, along with Michael Turnwald, Alex Seaver. That shot blocked. Horseman with the attempt saved out of bounds, and now long pass to Henline. Henline drives, reverse layup, up and in for the first points of the night. Just what you want your senior leader to do, take control at the offensive end. Great reverse layup. 2-0 early on, and right back the other way. Nice take inside by Carter Horseman to tie this one up at two. Yeah, Ottaville going inside all three possessions thus far. Uh, Carter Horseman, I mean, I'm a Chevy guy, but, man, he's built forward tough. Got in there, worked real hard, scored against Sutoff on that possession. There's another attempted steal, and getting his hands on that, that was Turnwald. 
and didn't come up with the steal, but did disrupt the offense, and Spencerville will inbound. Long three ball on the way off the glass, no good. Saved from going out of bounds and last touched by Spencerville. That one went off the leg of set off. Spencerville ran their patented sideline out of bounds, take the ball to the other side of the floor and get a double screen. Dylan Cook unable to score on that possession and the turnover on the rebound goes to the big green. So now Autoville with the basketball, uh, just about two minutes passed in the first quarter and we've got a 2-2 ball game. So far, the turnovers and the steals being kind of the story here the first couple of minutes. Driving all the way, and the waters part for Dylan Smith, and he puts up two more. He does such a great job of having his head up and seeing what he's presented with and does a real nice job, as you said. The waters parted, the sea parted. He just kept going to the basket. No defensive rotation there for Audeville. And that could be a hard shot to hit sometimes because you see that happen, you think, wait, is something going wrong? Why, is, yeah. why am I so open? Yeah. Charity stop shot, uh, shot no good. Back to Spencerville going the other way. Here's Osting. He pulls up from just inside the paint. No good. Kicked out. Hand line by the Bearcat. Spins in. And hand line will take a long three ball from the top of the key. No good. And they're going to let that one go out of bounds. I don't know. Really, they've had that one transition uh, bucket, that one. Uh, possession where they're able to get the ball down the floor, but seems like every other possession the ball's going out of bounds. They've had to go with their half court set. Spencerville's been able to get back on defense and uh, establish that defensive set. Four to two here, almost three minutes gone by in the first quarter. And so far, both teams trying to find that rhythm on offense and get established. The defenses for both sides have, as you mentioned to uh, mentioned Dave, made that tough so far. Here's the three ball on the way, open shot, front rim, no good. And we will have our first foul of the contest. It's going to go the other way. Yeah, again, Saturday night fever, we said. <laughs> Maybe we got a little high fever right now. Got to get established, as you said, a little more turnovers and points as we get things rolling here in the early going. That foul against Keaton Schnipke, his first, team's first. Double team, force the ball out of Dylan Smith's hand. Smith, one of the leading scorers, along with Josh Henline, who just had the basketball. Good trap defense there, employed by Audeville, and able to force a turnover. So yeah. the, the the trap is always kind of a, not to say dangerous, but it's always kind of risk-reward. That time it pays off. It sure does. So they double team the freshman for Spencerville. Owen sends a ball, and then he couldn't connect with the teammate on the pass. Audeville gets possession. Horseman works it around. Now Schnipke, and Schnipke drives inside, has some open space for a minute, then turns around around the rim out. Rebound corralled by Setoff. Coach Sensible urging his team to get the ball down the floor in transition. Ball in quickly and the attempted shot blocked. Blake Summers going up for it and he has it swatted away. Three ball up, open, good, splash for Alex Seaver. There's some rhythm for the big green. Seaver with the three, double deuces, number 22. Gives Audeville a 5-4 lead. Now back the other way into the hands of Carter Sudhoff. And back and forth we go, 6-5 yep. to five, Spencerville. Transition basketball both ways. You hate that as a coach when you give up a layup when you scored at the other end, but both of these teams can do that effectively. Drop step, hoop, and the harm. The shot will count as Kellen Schlegbaum Gets his first basket, and we look at the replay of this one, and Kiss is able to do enough. Go, go ahead, Dave. Yeah, Kiss is off the window, does Kellen Schlagbaum. Again, these teams are starting to warm up a little bit now. Does a nice job penetrating. Has, penetrating, has a real, had a real good hesitation dribble there, Patrick, and then, again, Kiss is off the window, has an opportunity for the three-point play the old-fashioned way, and converts. Indeed he does. Schlagbaum, the leading scorer on this team, averaging nearly 20 points a game. So we're going to be calling his name a lot more, I would imagine, before this one is said and done. His first three points of the night, giving them an 8-6 to six lead. Now here's Spencerville in action. Shot no good, knocked out, and that will stay down here with the Bearcats. Yeah, Carter Orr, good drop step there to the basket, just doesn't finish. The 6'2 sophomore forward averages four points per game. In line to inbound. 
pass up off the glass and in. Blake Summers, the 6'5 sophomore, gets his first points to tie this one up at eight. Yeah, that's a nice piece for Coach Stensiball, bringing him in off the bench. The 6'5 sophomore averages 6.8 points per game. Spencerville tightening up the defense here. Here's Slakebaum, drive, spin, shot, around the rim and no good. And then the Bearcats, they wanna, they wanna go up and down the floor. They wanna control the pace, control the tempo. They do, and right there, Schlagbaum and Henline, two players we highlighted in the pregame, have the foul called in this situation. We're gonna see it on the WSN replay. Schlagbaum reaching with that inside hand. It's like, what, I fouled him? But yeah, a lot of contact there, good call by the official. First foul on Schlagbaum, team second. Two and a half minutes remaining in the first quarter. Here's Carter Orr from downtown and it counts. Yeah, Orr gets a nice double screen there, able to get his feet set behind the arc, buries it. And Schlagbaum comes right back. Back the other way, Schlagbaum with the answer. And Audeville not afraid of matching the tempo with the Bearcats here early on. Now here's a quick shot off the side of the backboard and no good. And now the big green bring it up the court again. Yeah, Otteville walled up defensively. Dylan Smith off the side of the backboard. Another shot by Schlagbaum. Step back three, no good. Trey Landwehr in there. He can't get it to go. And then his shot blocked. Carter Orr playing defense as well. And now we're off to the races again. Henline, spin move, left hand, fouled. So Henline will go to the charity stripe for the first time this evening. Yeah, we see Carter Orr with two blocks. He's got three points already and talking to Coach Sensible, he said Carter Orr is probably that player that when we face other teams, that coach down at the other bench might say, where did he come from? And he has been very solid for the Bearcats, uh, not just tonight, but the entire season up to this point. That's the first foul on Turnwall, team's third. And that is Henline knocking that one down. Henline averaging 17 points a game. Here's another look at his approach. Able to draw contact there on Michael Turnwald. Turnwald picks up the personal. Henline a 54.5% free throw shooter. See if he gets both of them here, he does. He needs to get that free throw percentage up a little higher, being that senior leader. You want the ball in his hands at the end of the game. He's gotta be able to go to the charity stripe and convert, does nicely right there. Three point lead for Spencerville on the Charles River scoreboard. Coming up on 100 seconds remaining in this first quarter. Now driving inside and losing the handles on it was Turnwald and it will go back to Spencerville. Nice defense again by the Bearcats. Ottaville runs that five out motion so effectively. They had good movement there, but on the penetration, uh, unable to maintain possession and the turnover results. Okay, brings it up, in line. Three is up and good. And a six point lead for Spencerville as Keith Hutendorf wants to talk it over. Here's another look at that shot. As we head to break, it's a six point lead for Spencerville over Ottoville when we come back. Our premier sponsor tonight is Matt's Heating and Cooling. It's your home in the energy efficient zone. Call Matt's Heating and Cooling or go to callmattsheating.com to schedule your free estimate. Spencerville in the zone here with a six point lead as we come up on the final minute of this first quarter, Dave Bowen. Yeah, six point lead, Josh Henline with seven points in the quarter, doing a, what a senior should do in this situation. Senior leader getting the team off on the right start. Ottaville commits their fourth turnover right there, and that's an issue that they've got to correct, and I'm sure Coach Utendorf will be talking about that at the quarter break. The turnovers were fairly even in the early going, but they've uh, tilted towards Spencerville here in the last couple of minutes, and Spencerville has Put some points on the board as a result. Yeah, they take an advantage of the opportunity to get more shots off. Spencerville up 16 to 10. Shot up and away and no good. And corralled once again by Spencerville and an offensive foul. Over the back on number 24, Carter Orr again being aggressive. Nothing wrong with that if you're in Coach Sensiball's corner. He'll take that offensive foul on the offensive glass. Dylan Smith. Substitution. Yeah, there you go. Dylan Smith going to check in for Spencerville, and Josh Henline will have a seat for the last 40.7. Give him a little breather here. I'm sure he'll be right back at the quarter break. 
Here's Schleichbaum, drive, kick. And thinking about it, there was Carter Horseman. And Schleichbaum, he won't think about it, he'll just shoot. And no good, rebound, back come the Bearcats. Nice blast, looking inside for Dylan Smith and able to poke their hand in there was Ottoville. Yeah, Owen sends the ball, the freshman tried to connect with Dylan Smith, the senior there, unable to do so as Ottaville knocked the ball out of bounds. They'll maintain possession, will the Bearcats. Spencerville inbounds, or working inside, right hand, no good, ball out of bounds, and it will stay with the Bearcats. Yeah, nice footwork there by Carter Orr in the post. Does a nice job spinning to the 10, unable to convert, but again on the deflection, Spencerville maintains possession. Smith controlling it, 12 seconds. Looks like we'll hold for final shot. Smith driving in, looking inside to Sunhoff, open once again. Saw that play at the end of last night's game. Here's Audeville putting it up at the buzzer. No good. Yeah, you're right, uh, Patrick. Saw that play last night live and in person, and right there they execute the high pick and roll. Carter Sunhoff with the basket. Bearcats end on a 7-0 run. They lead by eight as we head to the second. Second quarter ready to commence here in our scoreboard presented by Charles River in Spencerville, the premier pharmaceutical and chemical research facility in Northwest Ohio. They're hiring. Visit jobs.criver.com to apply today. So first half stats, Dave Bowen. Yeah, from two point range, Ottaville, three for six. From three, one for five, four for 11 overall from the line, one for one. No defensive rebounds for the Big Green. I think that length for Spencerville shown itself. They've deflected it out. Ottaville's got the ball when it's going out of bounds a couple times. Four turnovers for the Big Green. For Spencerville, real quick, five for nine and two for five from two and three. Two for two from the free throw line. Only two turnovers for the Bearcats, seven rebounds. And turnovers adding to the eight point deficit right now that Ottaville has. And nice offensive rebound and good passing. This drive inside, can't get it to go. Or with the rebound, he puts it back up. That one a little too strong. Ottaville coming up with it. Carter Horseman with the Rebound, and then they're going to keep it over here. Yeah, contact underneath, not enough for the foul, and, and uh, Carter Horseman steps out of bounds. Spencerville maintains possession. Pass back into Blake Summers, and now Summers drives. I think it's an offensive charge. It yeah, is. Yeah, I believe you're right, it is. So they're going to get Blair Summers on the charge. Again, being aggressive to the basket. We're going to see it on the replay. Here he comes, cradles the ball, and sticks that elbow out a little bit. Great replay from the crew. Here's a three ball on the way by Keaton Shipke off the line, and no good. Now Smith bringing it back up. Spencerville trying to keep that up tempo. Dylan Smith getting it to fall. Yeah, Ottaville likes to score early in the possession. Spencerville gives them a dose of their own medicine right there. Dylan Smith has been doing that forever. He's a senior. If you don't stop him going hard to his right, the only thing that is going to stop him is his shooting it, kissing it off the window like he did right there. Schleichbaum tries to push the issue the other way and draws the foul. So he will go to the line and hits the first. Kellen, the 64% free throw shooter. And they need him right now. Don't want to let this lead expand any more than it is right now. Cut it to nine, the chance to cut it to eight, and get back and play some solid defense. Chase Langhall checking in for the big green. Also in there with Michael Turnwald. Schlegbaum, second free throw is up and good. That breaks a 9-0 Spencerville run. And Audeville's going to show a little one, two, two, three-quarter court pressure. Taking it back, Henline thought about the open three. Instead, he drives in. Skies up with the left hand off the glass and in. Yeah, beautiful left hand there off the penetration. Ottaville in that set just to slow Spencerville down. They actually It actually sped him up. They were able to find a lane to the basket. Turn ball for three, no good. And attempting to get it was Keaton Schnipke and unable to corral it. It'll be Spencerville basketball. Ottaville looks like they're going to stay in this 1-2-2. Three-quarter court pressure. Nope, just straight man-to-man -man now. Ten-point lead for Spencerville. And that pass is off the mark. 
Real nice be a job. Turnover. Yeah, real nice job by Keaton Schnipke. Took that cut away. Not a foul or anything. Just got in the line of uh, the cutter for Spencerville and the turnover results. Big Green with the basketball. There's Schleichbaum driving inside, kicking it back out. Langholz. Double team. They're looking for Schleich ball, then finds him. A little bit of a pick and roll into the hands of Schnipke. And back around we go. Spencerville defense making it tough to find a good shot. Absolutely good defense by the Bearcats. Schnipke puts up. That was a good looking three pointer, but it doesn't go in. And Spencerville with the rebound. Moving it around. Evan Osteen takes it inside. That one blocked from behind and back into the hands of the Big Green. Nice defense by Olliveville, and now Olliveville off and running. See if they can convert off the turnover. Back into the hands of Schlegbaum, and they'll reset. Five minutes to go in the second quarter. Olliveville down 10. Here's Schlegbaum kicking it back out. Great help side principles with Spencerville in this defense. Nice move by Horseman. Nice hesitation, and then puts that one in for Horseman. Cuts the lead to eight, 22-14. Carter Horseman, the leading field goal shooter on the big green at 53%, another turnover. So now Autoville able to force turnovers and forcing the issue. Here's a wide open three ball, good. Knocked down by Alex Seaver. And Kevin Sensabaugh wants to talk it over now as Autoville has cut it down to a five point lead. Here's another look at it, Dave. Yeah, we see the replay. Again, number 22, Alex Seaver wide open. Coach Stensiball timeout. He's gonna be talking about, hey, we need to pick up our guys on defense here in transition. That's the thing they love to do. We cannot allow them to have wide open looks like that, gentlemen. And I, where you're seeing Audeville do what Spencerville did in the first quarter to great success. They're forcing turnovers, they're keeping the tempo up, and they're finding they're making good shots. Absolutely. That, that possession right there personifies that, Patrick. Great, great possession to get this lead down to five, and you're feeling a lot better about yourself if you're a big green fan. 4.36 remaining in the second quarter, and what was a 10 point lead for Spencerville not that long ago cut down to a five point lead. And if nothing else, you want to talk strategy if you're head coach Kevin Sensabaugh, but also you just want to stop the momentum here as much as you possibly can. Yeah, great timeout. Again, talking about transition defense, but that, that was caused by some turnovers on offense. Allowed the big green to get moving uh, down the floor. Summer here shot. come again. Up and no good. Defensive rebound. Also coming into play here in the last couple minutes of this second quarter. And Langhalls and Langhalls able to save it, but not into the hands of anyone but Spencerville. And now Smith taking it all the way, and he is fouled. He'll head to the line for two shots. Yeah, Grant Lee recovering on defense. Gets a piece of the arm on Dylan Smith. That's going to send Smith to the free throw line where he is. He's a 40% free throw shooter here in the early going. Again, Coach Sensible would like to see some free throws go down with his veteran players, and I'm sure they will. Let's see how Dylan does here. That one rattles around and in. We see the replay, nice long pass. Those are a lot harder to make than they appear because they're so pretty when they go from teammate to teammate. And in this situation, that pressure offense created the foul, which was uh, committed by the big green. You're watching on TV and layups and things like that. They look easy to do. You think, oh, I could do that. Then you get on the court and they're not always so easy. Yeah, those long passes, again, not only do you have to make the pass, the receiver's got to be someone who can catch it. We, we talk about knowing your personnel. Some guys, uh, <laughs> they struggle with that. And those two made it look real easy right there. Horseman in trouble, and the ball stripped away. Owen Sensabaugh coming up with the steal. And now Henline moving around into the hands of Dylan Cook. Cook around to Smith, Smith for three. Off the rim, no good. Dylan's, Dylan Cook, he comes in, he's gonna make things happen. He, he attacked the backboard there as well, but gets called for the foul, the over the back call. Yep. Yeah, that's his first of the game thus far. First on Cook, sixth, so Ottaville will be shooting foul shots, minimum for the rest of the quarter here. Now Schlegbaum 
Driving inside, nice closure by the Bearcat defense. Kicking it back out. Now, Horseman working against end line. Horseman with a nice cut inside. Hoop and the harm. Excellent Carter Horseman. Move. Carter Horseman started to see him do this kind of stuff last year as the year progressed. Just a great, you know, toughness play, gritty. He's going to attack the rim. Again, that five out offense makes it very tough to have help side principles in place. And he was able to get the rim and draw the foul on Josh Henline. Chance for the three point play. Second foul on Henline. And that completes the three point play. Cuts the lead to four. Carter Horseman, he's a glue guy for this Ottaville Big Green squad. Does the dirty stuff. Kick out, hand line open for three, but nice closing defense. And back the other way, and look who it is, Carter Sudhoff. Yeah, give the assist to hand line. He got his man in the air, penetrated, drew the help, found the open man. Sudhoff just taking care of business when he gets the basketball. Six-point lead for Spencerville, two and a half remaining in the first half. Slake bomb fakes, throws it up. A little too hard off the rim and in, and then trying to corral it away there from Carter Orr. Now long pass back the other way and the easy bucket by Sudhoff once again and Sudhoff with uh, eight points and they've all been behind the defense. Yes, Dylan Smith makes the great pass from one end to the other and has his head up, sees his open teammate. Three ball by Grant Lease is no good. Picked up by Seaver, three ball on the way by Michael Turnwald is up and in. Yeah, Michael Turnwald, he is a 44% Three-point shooter, leader on the squad, makes do right there. Nice three-point, just what Big Green, the Big Green needed at that point in time. Pretty frenetic pace here in this part of the game. It's like we're calling wiffle ball again, Dave. There you go. I wondered if you were going to make a reference. We really enjoyed doing that together that third weekend in August down at Red, Ohio, the wiffle ball capital of Ohio. Here's a replay again. We see number 24 getting a nice look there. Michael Turnwald buries it. And we'll come right back, and Dylan Smith comes right back with the two-point, seven-point lead for Spencerville. And now back of the way here, Schnipke working underneath, and he is fouled. Nice job there by Keaton Schnipke, the 6'3 junior. There's that transition. Audeville, they want to get a great look within eight sec seconds of the possession. We see it right here. Get the ball down. The defense is not set up. Draw the foul. Schnipke's going to go to the free throw line. He's only shot three free throws thus far this year. One for three, two for four now. Puts that one in, and Carter Sudhoff will head to the bench with two fouls. He's replaced by Blake Summers, and something to keep an eye on. Henline and Sudhoff both with two fouls. Yeah, and, and that's a result of Audeville's quickness. Uh, they're not bigger than the big green, but they like to move the ball and snap it around and attack the rim, get the defense out of position and draw those fouls. Final 90 seconds of the first half. Spencerville basketball with a five-point lead. Henline, corner three, got it. Great flare screen by number 45, Blake Summers. Gets Henline open in the corner. Does a nice job of burying it. Turnwald. Kicking it back out. And now Horseman making the attempt. And we'll have a foul on the floor. I think that might be on Josh Henline. We're going to see this penetration again. Carter Horseman going with the left hand. Henline bumps him. Okay, so that is the that is the second foul on Josh Henline. That scored earlier they said they already had two. Okay. They marked him for a second foul just now, so Henline will have a seat. I wondered if Coach Sensabaugh was going to keep playing Henline with two fouls. As it turns out, he's not. Henline has had a seat. Three-point shot, foul shot is no good. Here's a three-point shot. That one off the rim. Spencerville controls and will have another foul. This is going to be against Carter Horseman. That'll be his first. We see the replay here, the offensive rebound and the shot, and then the next rebound, Owen Sensible gets the rebound and uh, draws the foul. 15 foul on Ottaville. So Ottaville has one more foul to give before a bonus situation for Spencerville. And we are in the final minute. Nice spin move. And inside off the glass and in. Nice take indeed by Carter Orr. Yep, Carter Orr having a really good first half. Aggressive, playing great defense and offense. 
Out here is Ottoville trying to get something going, and Chase Langhall puts that one in. Get the lead back down to single digits. And Boker. out of bounds, and Coach Utendorf is thinking it was a out on Spencerville, but the Bearcats will maintain possession with 25 seconds left. Did a nice job of letting his thoughts be known in a respectful way to the Zebras. Here's the high pick and roll. Final 10 seconds of this first half. Here's Smith working inside and looking for the charge and got it. There's Carter Horseman again, Johnny on the spot. Easy call, Dylan Smith came in hard, lowered the left shoulder. We're gonna see it on the replay. Horseman rotates over, hands up, feet set. Offensive charge. Nicely done, Carter Horseman. That's the second foul on Dylan Smith. So foul starting to mount against the Spencerville basketball team in strategic areas. Eight seconds left, that's what Ottaville likes to get a shot within anyway, so here they come. So final seconds of this first half, Schlagbaum from way downtown, that one's short, and they're gonna cork it up here with no time, and that is gonna be a wrap on the first half of action here from the walk-in closet, Spencerville High School. It's a 35-27 lead for Spencerville. We're back with the second half on WOSN. Welcome back to the walk-in closet. Halftime wrapping up Spencerville with the 35-27 lead over Ottaville. Patrick Campbell, Dave Bowen taking a look at the first half, and it was a, it was a game of, of turnovers and some shooting, clutch shooting for Spencerville. Yeah, and some runs as well, but you're right. Clutch shooting, Spencerville's 14 for 25 uh, here at the half, 56%. Ottaville, 37%, 9 for 24, 3 for 13 from 3. I'm sure that was discussed a little bit about getting clean looks, good looks, great looks, some inside-out action, get that shot to go down a little bit for Ottaville here in the second half. Both shooting great from the free throw line, 6 for 7 for Ottaville, 4 for 4 for Spencerville. Another key piece, Spencerville is out rebounding Ottaville 14 to 6. Ottaville's carrying an 8.5 uh, rebounding edge into this game. So that's playing a big factor. The length of Spencerville has played a huge factor in the first half. A lot of block shots, a lot of uh, hesitation by Ottaville when they get in there and kick it back out. And again, offensively, Spencerville's taking advantage of their bigs as well. Josh Henline pacing the Spencerville attack. He's got 12 points. Of course, uh, some foul uh, concerns. No one in foul trouble yet, per se, but Henline, Dylan Smith, Carter set off with two fouls apiece. Uh, if they can stay out of foul trouble and not pick up any more fouls, at least until later in the game, that's going to help out Spencerville. But if they get into foul trouble early, it could create some opportunities for Ottaville as that shot by Carter Horseman does not go down. We are back into action here in the third quarter. Real good look for Ottaville from behind the arc, unable to convert. And line driving in, trying to get that, the cutter there, Carter Sudhoff, and unable to connect, and it will be a turnover. Yeah, just being on the same page there, Sutoff would have been open on the opposite block, but he made a decision to make contact contact with the defender, which is what you want your bigs to do. They just weren't able to hook up. Horseman takes the open three, and it's short. Rebound corralled, however, Sievert, but back into the hands of Spencerville. Long pass, looking for Sutoff. Sutoff kicking it back out. It looks like they'll slow down a little bit. Give it back to Josh Henlon. Yeah, nice job by Dylan Cook. Knows his role, kicks it back out to the point, senior point guard and teammate, Josh Henlon. And trouble there is Kevin Hosting trying to get someone to rotate to him. And it is Smith, and now Henlon, charity stripe, thinks differently about it. He puts it up and passes it. No, Dylan Cook, he puts it up and in. Yeah, he knows his role down there, too. Great offensive rebound by Dylan Cook. Says, I'm not passing this one out. Goes up strong and scores. Spencerville with the first bucket of the second half. And that shot by Tenwald is good. So nice answer by Ottaville. Yeah, Michael Turnwald clearly behind the arc there. Nothing but the bottom of the net. Great three-pointer for Ottaville here. Their first bucket of the third quarter. And now here's Henline with a wide open three, and that one is off the back of the rim. Here comes the big green. So Ottaville still showing that they'll shoot the three. A little hesitation there and decides to pass it off. Does Grant Lease. Then decides to shoot it anyway is Horseman. That one no good. Yeah, Carter Horseman 0 for 3 here in the third quarter from behind the arc. I, I know he can hit that shot, but 
I really have watched Carter Horseman over the years be very effective down around the block. I'd love to see him get back down there because I know he can do good work and make, make things happen offensively down around the basket. Set off for Spencerville has been open behind the defense a number of times, and I'd, I'd love to be in the mind of uh, Keith Utendorf as he sees that and wonder what, what his thoughts are in that particular set. Here's a long three ball, high off and no good. Turnwald from way downtown and then draws the foul on the other end. Yeah, Michael Many Turnwall hit. took a deep three there. Thought he got knocked down. No call. And Spencerville attacked off the defensive rebound. That might have been a shot trying to draw that three-point play. And if you knock it down, then it's possible four points. Just uh, trying to make something happen. Both teams with only a basket apiece as we're two and a half minutes gone by in the third quarter. And some miscommunication between Henline and Smith. I think he was expecting Smith maybe to cut in a little bit more. And in any case, it's a turnover, and the ball goes back to Audeville. Yeah, that, that had turnover written all over it. It was just going to be a tough pass to catch, even if they were on the same page. So Audeville, another opportunity. Schlagbaum with the penetration. He does so. 15-footer off the rim and in, and knocked away. It'll go back to Spencerville. And that is a shot he typically makes. He does a great job of getting to the NWC in the middle of the paint right there. Ball goes off the right side of the rim, and then he knocked it out of bounds. Out of bounds, Spencerville basketball. Audeville's gotten balanced scoring so far tonight. Four of the guys on the floor for them have at least six points. Good ball movement by Spencerville there, and then recovery. Looks like it's going to, yeah, stay, stay with stay Spencerville. Spencerville. Yeah. The officials get together, get the call correct. Two Audeville players rotated over and knocked the ball out of bounds. Nice piece of officiating right there, Patrick. Inbounding in front of Spencerville band director Josh Van Gorder. Headline spin move inside left hand. That one short. Rebound by Horseman. Schleich ball driving, kicking out. Turn wall for three. No good. They're going to get over the back, called on Horseman. Yeah, nice check out by Carter Sutoff. Even though he's 6'6", he realizes fundamentally he needs to check his defender off, does, and draws the foul in the process. Not seeing a lot of tight defense on those Audeville three-point attempts, but really at, at the moment, you're going to have to prove that you can hit those shots. So far, they haven't been calling for the big green. Here's a nice cut inside, put in by Sudhoff, who's once again behind the defense. Yeah, nice high-low action there by Spencerville. Take advantage of the height differential. Here comes Cutting Audeville. inside by Turnwall, right something yep. you just mentioned, Dave. Attacking the rim, going to get to the free throw line. As a result, Michael Turnwall is a 67% free throw shooter, second on the team for the big green. It's going to be foul number three on Sudhoff. Here's another look at it. There's that high-low action. The pass from Carter Orr again down to Sutoff. Nicely done. Anytime you can have the ball coming down to the post from the top of the key, it takes away the help. And then the penetration right there by none other than Michael Turnwald. And he gets to the free throw line. It's one of two. Henline and Sutoff now will have a seat for Spencerville. Checking in Owen Sensabaugh. Smith with a nice penetration coming in from the far side for two. Yeah, when Dylan Smith is going downhill, he's just almost impossible to stop. Does a great job getting to the rim there. Back the other way is Schleichbaum, no good. 41-31, Spencerville on top of Ottoville. Under four minutes to play, and the waters part for Smith once again, and he puts it up and in. If you're not going to put something in front of me, I'm not going to stop. Dylan Smith goes to the rack, and Coach Utendorf's going to call a timeout. Wants to talk this one over. Going to be a full timeout. A 43-31 lead for Spencerville. We'll be back. Our premier sponsor is Matt's Heating and Cooling. Is your home in the energy efficient zone? Call Matt's Heating and Cooling or go to callmattsheating.com to schedule your free estimate. And our scoreboard is presented by Charles River and Spencerville, the premier pharmaceutical and chemical research facility in Northwest Ohio. They're hiring. Visit jobs.criver.com to apply today. Spencerville pushing out to their largest lead of the contest so far, 
31, Dave Bowen, and this, it's been another run. A lot of things they've been doing well all game have come together these last couple minutes. Yeah, Dylan Smith, again, he's been the key. He's attacked the basket. He just does such an outstanding job of probing the defense, reading what they're doing, and if they're they're not doing what they should do as far as stopping the basketball, he's going to take advantage of it. Kellen Schlagbaum tries to do the same thing right there, comes up short. Open layup does not go, and now the quick pass, able to save the possession. They'll get another shot at it. Osting passing it around. This is Smith inside, fadeaway, no good. Rebound by Ottoville. Jace Langhall is coming up with the rebound, and defensive rebounds have been a little few and far between. Here's Schnipke from downtown. That one high off the rim and no good. Pass again inside, and Schnipke with the interception. Nice recovery there by the big green. Schnipke nicely done. Gets in the flight of that pass from Sensible to Carter Orr. Here's Turnwall cutting inside and he draws contact. Turnwall's going to go back to the free throw line. That's going to be the second one on Blake Summers. Team second. Got to convert these, but with the clock stop, cut this lead to 10. It is a game of run, so if both teams looking to have that transition basketball occurring, you can get yourself back in the game very, very quickly. But again, it does help if you can score when you're behind the clock stop, as Turnwald does right here. Hits them both, and really the only uh, real run of significance in this one so far, there was a 9-0 run by Spencerville at the end of the first quarter heading into the second. That is a portion of the gap. I mean, it's a 10-point lead right now. That's most of what this has been. The rest of it has been pretty much back and forth. Exactly right, Patrick. That 9-0 run, and then Ottaville's not been able to answer with one of their own throughout the game up to this point. A lot of that's been a result of their outside shooting not being where it's been throughout the season up to this point. So the opportunities have been there. They just have not been able to cash in. Here's a nice cut inside around. <laughs> Rocking the baby to sleep. <laughs> Owen Sensible with the basket. Had the WSN game, the first game of the year for Spencerville against St. Henry. And Sensible had four threes before he missed the shot. Got a two there. Nice, nice recovery there by Ottaville. Schnipke with the three ball in the corner pocket. And that cuts it down back to single digits. And issue with the basketball. And we're going to have a foul here on the floor as they're going to call. Carter Horseman for the foul. That's going to be his third. Yeah, an unfortunate situation there for Horseman. Got his feet tangled up with the Spencerville basketball player there. And that's going to be foul number three, and he's going to have to take a seat. So he will check out. Trey Landwehr will check in, the 5'8 senior. Here comes the double screen. Now working inside here is Orr. Whoa! Shot. Up and in. Rocking the baby part two. <laughs> That's a nice job going to his left. The finger roll. Looking for that cut inside and slapped away there by Osting. So it'll stay with Audeville. Again, Carter Orr. The coaches don't know who he is by now. They will when they look at the film. He has been a spark plug for Spencerville off the bench this evening. So Osting will have a seat after making the defensive play. Audeville will inbound under the basket. 140 and counting remaining in the third quarter. It's an 11 point Spencerville lead and Keaton Schnipke now will go to the line with a chance to add to it. I like how Schnipke attacked the basket to the middle of the floor and then spun back, won the foot battle by being able to look and hook on Summers there and draws the foul. So Schnipke going to go to the free throw line shot a limited number of free throws up to this point in the season. That first one's no good. Here's another look at it. Yeah, watch him come to the middle right to the NWC, then drops that left foot and wins that foot battle, gets Summers out of position and draws the foul. Nicely done. Second shot is up and good. That was the third foul on Blake Summers, team's third. And now Schnipke. Has a seat on the bench. Spencerville brings it out as we come up on 90 seconds remaining. Spencerville with a 10 point lead on the Charles River scoreboard. Now we've got some action away from the basketball. Yes. It's going to be a, looks like a foul on Lease. Yes, he's guarding Blake Summers. He's 6'5, Grant Lease at 6'0. He's given up five inches and they're battling in there. 
but the officials deemed it was just a little too physical and they called a foul. Summers inbounds. He pulls up from just inside the three-point line. No good. Now here's Langles. He had trouble. Has the ball slapped away. Interrupts his dribbling. Back to Schlakebaum now. Schlakebaum, spin move, kicks out. Three ball on the way for release. No good. Dylan Smith probing again. Lost the handles for a second. He said, yeah. oh, better, better have the basketball. Three-point shots just not falling for Audeville tonight. They've had plenty of opportunities. Here's Summers underneath and can't get it to fall. Second chance opportunity. Doesn't get that one. Tip no good. Relentless on the offensive glass. Summers and on the floor. Can't, that's Carter Orr again. You know, he's just around the basketball yeah. all the time. You're going to see this flurry of offensive rebounds. Summers misses it, tries to go with the tip back up. A lot of action and the turnover, but again, Coach Sensible has got to be really, really happy with that effort on the offensive glass. Conversely, Coach Utendorf, hey, we got to check out, limit them to one shot, gentlemen. Now Schlegbaum, 21 seconds, passes it off. Here's Turnwald, cutting inside, blocked, and the foul committed, Carter Orr. Will pick up his second foul of the night. Yeah, Orr brought his hand down on that one. And Michael Turnwald was able to hang in the air long enough to draw the foul. I don't think Turnwald would have been able to convert that shot. Orr should have just stayed straight up. But as a result, Turnwald at the free throw line where he connects on the first one. So you can put that hand up, but once you bring that hand down, it makes it very difficult to not have a foul called on the defense. Absolutely. It's an easy, easy call for the official at that point in time. First shot is good. Cutting the Spencerville lead back down to nine, now back down to eight. And we'll see if Ottaville can chip into that anymore, or Spencerville can put it back here to double digits with the final nine seconds of this third quarter. Nice pass inside, nice kick. Going back the other way and trying to get it to Summers inside. And Henley oh! throws it up. Right hand. Look, Vaughn, not even looking at the buzzer. Oh. Just the way Sensabaugh drew it up. That's a horse shot right there. We see the replay. A lot of scrambling. Yep. Yeah. Three seconds. Throws it up with two. Cord. Josh Headline. WOSN High School Basketball. You got to love it, Patrick. Could be a top five play. 49-39, Spencerville, we head to the fourth. Our premier sponsor tonight is Matt's Heating and Cooling. Is your home in the energy efficient zone? Call Matt's Heating and Cooling or go to callmattsheating.com to schedule your free estimate. Take you back to the end of the third quarter. Sometimes, Dave Bowen, things just going your way. Yeah, now if you ask Josh Henline, he said straight dice, had it the whole way, but yes. That won the quarter for Spencerville. We see it again. It was a tight quarter at 12 each. But Henline says, hey, end of the quarter, I can throw it up any way I want right now. Coach won't yell at me. And he scores. And that, that may be a big bucket as far as momentum as we start the fourth quarter. You, uh, you break that one out when you want to secure the E against your opponent <laughs> playing horse. As long as you don't have to prove it. That's right. <laughs> Ten-point lead for Spencerville. Bearcats with the basketball. And we are underway here in the fourth quarter. Patrick Hamler, Dave Bowen here with you. And again, it was a 12-12 quarter, and Audeville shot all of 16% in the third quarter, two for 12, and they got to the free throw line, though. That's how they were able to stay close, seven for nine from the line, and Spencerville was seven for 13 from two, 0 for one for three from three. They did not shoot a free throw. Here's Henline just inside the three-point line and knocks it down. 16 points tonight for Josh Henline. Yeah, when you make that shot like you did at the end of the third quarter, that next shot, that bu that bucket looks like it's, you know, the sea out there. You can throw it in from anywhere, and he hit the bottom of the courts on that shot as well. Oh, nice block by Dylan Smith. And now he's running the floor. Reading everything in front of him. Smith gets it back, puts it inside, no. Second chance, no. Third chance, no, but foul. Again, the length of Spencerville has presented itself here. 
throughout the game, but especially in the latter half of the third quarter and now in the fourth as we see uh, number 23 for Spencerville going to the free throw line. Carter Sutoff, the 6'6 boats player. That was a third foul on Schlegbaum. And that length that's really affected Kellen at the other end, but there's the shot, one offensive rebound. Two offensive rebounds with the foul. And as you said, Schlagbaum with the foul. He's struggled to find that lane on the offensive end as he has done so effectively up to this point in the year. He can get in there, but when the bigs rotate over, it makes it really tough. We've got a timeout on the floor. So Schlagbaum checks out with three fouls, only seven points in this one tonight. Spencerville in command, 53 to 39 here in the fourth. Tonight's scoreboard presented by Charles River in Spencerville. The premier pharmaceutical and chemical research facility in Northwest Ohio is hiring. Visit jobs.criver.com to apply today. Three Spencerville Bearcats in double figures tonight. Josh Enline leading the way with 16 points. Dylan Smith with 12. Also Carter Sudhoff with 12 points as well. 14-point lead for Spencerville here in the fourth quarter. A little regrouping for the Big Green, a 4-0 run to start the fourth quarter for Spencerville. The Bottaville's going to come back. They needed to regroup, and they need a great possession here. Here's a drive inside. Think better of it. Ball slapped away, and you mentioned a couple of different times this ball is up for grabs, and it was going to be a turnover in favor of Autoville, but we're going to have a foul, and it's going to be a against Spencerville. So they're going to call Carter or yeah, that's a tough on situation the foul. That's his third. We're going to see it on the replay. Both guys going for the basketball, and they really don't see each other, and they hit each other. And, uh, yeah, it's going to go Audenville's way this time. I understand the contact. You don't want that happening. It's just in that situation, I, that's a tough call, whoever gets the foul called on that. Spencerville going to show a little 1-3-1 one, one zone defense here in the half court. Bonneville looking to make something happen. Schlagbaum back in, cutting inside. This is turn wall, ball stripped away. Spencerville off and running, and right there, nice defense again. Schlagbaum coming up with the steal. Kick out, turn wall, three ball, no. And second chance opportunity. That one slapped away by Horseman's shot blocked. Carter Sutoff with the block again. You've got Carter versus Carter in there, and uh, this time Sutoff wins as Horseman tried to go up with it. Did a nice job just again. The length of Sutoff has made itself known. We see the rebound here, offensive rebound, and then the block just playing basketball right there, and then the, the uh, foul called on Horseman with Dylan Smith going to the free throw line. And that's Horseman's fourth. As you said, that'll send Smith to the line. Coming up on the front end of a one and one. And hits it. Second one's good. 6-0 run to start the fourth quarter for Spencerville. They're gonna stay in the one three one zone. Stepped out of bounds. Mr. Schnipke, Keaton Schnipke on that pass. We had a great view from it up here in the Crow's Nest. Indeed we did. Number, another uh, turnover by Ottoville. Spencerville in control, 16-point lead for the Bearcats. Coming up under six minutes. We are under six minutes remaining in the fourth quarter. Yeah, that's Ottoville's third turnover here in the fourth quarter can't afford to have that happen if you're trying to dig back into it. And it's going to be a foul. Looks like it's going to be on Keaton Schnipke. Schnipke asking for the tie-up. So Carter Sutton's going to go to the free throw line where he's a 50% free throw shooter on the young season. That's the second foul on Schnipke. Now here's Sutton off the 6'6 junior. Rattles in and out. Lake bomb pushing the issue. Drive, kick out, turn wall, good. Timeout, Ottoville. Nice penetration there by Schlagbaum. Finds his teammate, Michael Turnwald, the leading three-point shooter on this team. They convert 
Coach Utendorf with the quick timeout. So the first bucket of the fourth quarter for Audeville cuts it down to a 13 point lead and those uh, shots need to start falling more if Audeville wants an opportunity to come back in this one. Sunday action for you on WOSN. Girls and boys basketball will have Wapak and Marion Local and then Kaleida Van Wert colliding. Some more action from the Putnam County League as you're watching right now. And then next week, Liberty Bend, Ottawa Glandorf girls uh, tangling. And then Friday, 10 p.m. over on WOSN, we'll have Crestview and Columbus Grove. I'll have sports report for you at 10 p.m. on Friday as we uh, get ready for Christmas break. But we've got a lot more scores and highlights to get to you before we get there. And then next weekend, St. Mary's and Wapak over on WTLW. Adrian and Albion in some college basketball action in Columbus Grove. Crestview, boys, that should be a great matchup in the Northwest Conference. We'll have that one for you 7 o'clock on Saturday. And then these two teams, Audeville will next be in action on Tuesday with Delphus Jefferson. Spencerville, they'll be back in action in league action next Friday against Lipsick. There you see Audeville's upcoming schedule there for a second. Then Spencerville's upcoming schedule, as you mentioned. Lipsick and Kalina both off to great start so far this season. No cupcakes in Northwest Ohio. you got to bring it every night. Without a doubt. 55-42 Spencerville, five and a half remaining. Here's Smith, spin move with the left hand. Such great body control again, his head's up the whole time. Young players can watch that and grow and learn from it. Dylan Smith doing it right fundamentally. Kind of cut inside and turning around in the foul. Turnball shot off the mark, but he will head to the line. Another opportunity for Audeville to cut into the lead with the clock stop. We see the WSN replay here. Nice pass from Carter Horseman to Michael Turnwald. Owen sends a ball, gets him on the arm. Did he convert on that first free throw or did he miss it? He's watching the replay, Patrick. He missed it. Second one on the way is up and good. 14 point lead for Spencerville. First foul for Owen Sensabaugh. And able to beat the trap with the pass. Michael Turnwald pacing the Audeville attack tonight. He has 15 points. And it comes up with the steal. Turnwald going all the way to the rack and in. Audeville going to stay with the full court man to man pressure on the basketball. See if they can force another turnover and get a live ball transition basket. 17 points for Turnwald, and he's there and commits the foul. You see the replay. Michael Turnwald gets the steal. He goes from L.A. to Boston, coast to coast, and lays it in, Patrick. I think a good choice there by Spencerville to not try and do anything to get a foul or anything like that, something that might, you know, I mean, you're, you're up 12 still with Spencerville, but you don't want to do anything to get this team up and going, to get the, the juices going, so to speak. Uh, I, I think that was a good non-pursuit in that particular case. Yeah, that's a great point, Patrick. Absolutely. We both we know both of these teams can put points up in a hurry. Foul shot is no good. So Schlake Bong will bring it up. Four and a half remaining. 12-point lead. An opportunity for Ottaville to get it down to 10 or possibly single digits. Here's Snipke from downtown. Yes! Nine-point lead. Here come the big green with a little run of their own. There's the trap on Smith, keeps his head up, finds his teammate, Carter Orr, and he's going to attack the rim. And Orr takes it, and he is fouled. 6-0 run here for Ottoville. And I believe that's going to be number five on Carter Horseman. See the replay. Carter Orr says, I'm going to attack on you. And he does. Draws the contact. Going to put himself to the free throw line, and that is number five that on is five on horseman, horseman so he will be done carter or seven no i'm sorry seven points but again it just seems like he's been everywhere tonight yeah. very effective defensively he's made it tough on horseman and when it hasn't been him making it tough on horseman is coach Uthendorf continuing to coach the senior carter horseman right there on the sideline it's been Mr. Sutton, what a tough night for Carter Horseman in there. Carter Orr getting the hometown rim. Chase Langhall is coming in to replace Horseman.
59-48, three ball on the way by Schnipke, no good. And now Smith, harassed by Schlagbaum, able to get it up, triple covered. Here's Orr, kick out. Sets the ball, pin line, no. Schlagbaum with the rebound. Yeah, you expect the pace of this one to slow down with an 11-point lead, but neither side looks terribly interested in that right now. Not really, they're just going to keep attacking. I, maybe Coach Sensible would say, hey, yeah, let's hold it, but when you got that situation again, we've seen it throughout the night. Dylan Smith just reading the defense, probing and attacking and scoring so strong when he gets to the rim. 18 points for Dylan Smith. That pass, uh, that shot is blocked, and another shot by Langholz is blocked, but he's fouled in the process, and he will head to the line. And that, I think, is going to be four on Sutton. No, they called nice. that one on Carter Orr. It's his okay. fourth. Nice offensive rebound. By the big three, by number two, Jace Langhaus. And draws the foul, goes to the free throw line again. An opportunity to score with the clock stop. Unable to convert on that first free throw. Look here at the 6-1 junior. Trying to cut into the 13-point Spencerville lead and does. And we'll have a timeout here on the floor as Audeville talks about it. 3-18 remaining in this one. 12-point lead for the Bearcats here at home. Well, if you're looking for the perfect gift for an out-of-town sports fan, WOSN can be streamed anywhere in the world online on Roku and Apple TV for a $100 annual donation. Give the gift of hometown sports for the holidays. Sign up on app.wosn.tv or by downloading our Roku and or Apple TV apps. If you have both of them, download them both. It'll Who work. To judge? It'll work. 12-point lead for Spencerville, 61-49 over Ottoville in a game that has, you know, you, you expect you get a 10-point lead or a, a lead, you, you slow it down, you change how things are going, you adjust the tempo a little bit. Uh, these two teams have not changed at all since the first quarter. No, Saturday night special in that sense. And you, you've scouted each other a little bit, but both teams focused on their Friday night game. Ottoville with Jennings, Spencerville with Crestview. And now you're just playing and looking to get better every possession. Uh, you're right, they have not slowed the tempo down at all either way. Moving it around and turn wall looking for a three. Seaver kicking it inside. This is Langhall just coming in. And Carter Sudhoff says, no, sir. Again, he not was, in my closet. Yeah, <laughs> not in my closet. Able to fake the first defender out, but not the second. And you're right. It's a nice block shot. Here's the replay. Now we're back to live action here. So it'll be out of bounds. It's going to stay down here with Audeville. So Big Green basketball, we're under three minutes, and you think, man, it's a 12-point lead. This one's pretty much done. Well, you know, with the tempo that they've been playing, it's not necessarily out of the realm of possibility for Ottoville to stage a comeback here, especially if, you know, you start hitting the three, get a couple turnovers, anything can happen. Here's your three ball. That one is short. Good rebound by Spencerville. Some of the Bearcats have done really well all night. It held Ottaville to one and done. They haven't got those second chance opportunities like Spencerville has. Yeah, one and done, and Carter set off on that rebound. Kept the ball above his head so it couldn't be stripped from him and then found a teammate for the outlet. Done very effectively. Great fundamentals by Sutoff there. So it looks like we're gonna see Spencerville maybe run a little bit more of a set. Uh, going for the steal there was Turnwald, almost had it. Going around, this is Sensabaugh. He passes inside, up and in. That was a great possession right there where Spencerville said, in, in that last time out, I think Coach Sensabaugh said, we want a 90% shot. And they got the 90% shot converted. They had some open looks, did not take them, waited until they were at the basket. And again, Sensabaugh with the assist, and then they convert the bucket right at the rim. Going to see him do the same thing here as well, I believe. Turn wall is three, no good. Just have not gotten those shots to fall here. Sends the ball from downtown. Swish! Yeah, I've watched him shoot in junior high and early in this season. Uh, maybe not a 90% shot as far as where it was from the floor, but when it's in his hands, there's a good chance that he's going to make that open three, and he did. Coach likes those a lot more when they go in, you know? 
Yeah, if he didn't make that, he might not want to turn and look at the coach who is his father in that particular situation. But he was wide open, shot it in rhythm, and hit nothing but the bottom of the net. Just get back on defense. <laughs> Just get back on defense. As fast as you can. Yeah, that's what Dad would want. Just get back on defense. <laughs> coach Utendorf making some mass substitutions here as we take a look at this last sequence. See some of these younger guys getting in. Andy Mormon coming in, Landon Horseman accompanying Lang Halls. Adam Brinkman also checking into the game for Ottoville. Grant Trittman, Garrett Trittman, I'm sorry, Garrett Trittman also coming in. Played some JV time in the game earlier. That shot no good, and we are up in the final minute of this one. So Spencerville looking to go to 5-0 and on the young season. Yeah, great weekend for the Bearcats, defeating the undefeated Crestview Knights on Friday night and taking care of the undefeated Big, Big Green tonight. Couple of tough teams, couple of tough games the way you want to start. Nice follow by Sensabaugh. Missed the three. Either get back on defense or follow your shot there and make the go. layout. There you Those go. are your two <laughs> options if you miss the shot. Final 20 seconds. Langholz get it. Nice pass inside, and the bucket good by Landon Horseman. Excellent six back cut. Sophomore. Yeah, excellent back cut for two for the big green right there. So they'll dribble this one out. It's a 17-point win for the Bearcats tonight at home, 68-51. to They get the win over Autoville tonight. We're back to wrap this one up when we come back on WOSN. Welcome back, 68-51, our final Spencerville getting the win over Audeville here with head coach Kevin Sensabaugh. Coach, a terrific effort on both sides, really, for you guys offensively and defensively. Was that kind of what you expected coming out after a tough game against Crestview last night? Yeah, I, I actually thought it was going to be tough because, you know, to, to bring up that kind of energy two nights in a row against two really good teams is hard to do. I told our guys that after the game. That's really difficult to, to, to play with the emotional intensity that you have to play with. And our guys did a great job of it. They handled pressure. They did a lot of things well. A great performances tonight from uh, Carter Sudoff is going to be our Stolly Award winner. Dylan Smith, Josh Henline. Uh, any any surprises about really how those guys just stepped up and played, especially Carter having the, the big shot last night and then just coming up big tonight? Yeah, he's been improving every day and, and year by year. He's gotten a lot better. He worked at his game in the offseason. So I'm really happy for him that, that he's had a really, really good weekend. But I thought probably the biggest difference in the weekend was that we had Dylan Smith and the other teams didn't. I mean, Dylan was just really good. He handled the ball that nobody could get it from him. I, last night he had eight assists and zero turnovers. He didn't have many turnovers tonight. He was really good on both ends, and I think he was the difference. And there were a lot of times, too, with Smith. And really, you know, for all the talk of how many points you guys score, your defense really showed out. Audeville had a lot of trouble hitting good three-point shots, didn't hit a lot of them at all. And you guys really forced a lot of turnovers that led to other points on the other end. Yeah, our guys did a great job of playing with defensive energy. I mean, and that's obviously we know that we, you know, have some scoring capability. But if we want to be who we want to be, we got to defend with energy. And I thought we did that pretty well tonight. Coach, congratulations, 17-point win at home. Uh, go enjoy it. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Congrats, Coach. Bring Dave Bowen back in here. I mentioned our Stolly Hustle Award winner, Carter Sutoff, had the game-winning shot last night, and we saw a lot of those same plays, getting behind the defense, getting where he needed to be at that time to score. Just a terrific performance for him all the way around. Yeah, Carter just continues to grow, the 6'6 junior, both on the floor with his physical play and his mental play, and that's what we saw from Spencerville as a whole tonight. Uh, they played really hard physically both nights, but they had to bring it mentally because of the two quality opponents they played this weekend. But Sutoff had 12 points, and he really altered a lot of shots defensively. He had some clear-cut blocks, but then he really limited Kellen Schlagbaum, who likes to penetrate and get in there and do some good things offensively. He was not able to do that tonight, and a lot of that was because of the presence of Carter Sutoff. You always wonder how teams are going to come out on Saturday after having tough games on Friday, and really, I think we saw good energy from both teams. Audeville didn't seem like that they were sluggish at all. They just had some problems with the length of Spencerville, as you mentioned, and just couldn't get those three-point shots to fall, and that's really what hurt him in the long run. You're right. Uh, Coach Utendorf said this would be a barometer game for them, too. 
tonight, and it was. I think they can take away some things that they did well, but the, the three-point shooting was not there for them tonight. They've got to look at that and say, okay, when that's not going down for us on a given, given night, where else are we going to go? Especially when we play a team that has some length like Spencerville. They'll see that again. They'll figure it out, and they'll be, they'll be really tough down the stretch. 68-51, our final tonight. Spencerville getting the win over Audeville. Want to thank our crew tonight who brought you the sights and sounds from the walk-in closet tonight. Ben Reif, our director, Megan Sherrick on replay, Lexi Waddle, Caitlin Henderson, Cassidy Driscoll, Clay Jordan on camera. Guys, terrific job as always. That's going to wrap it up here. They're, they're vacuuming here. We better get out of here before we get sucked up as well from the walk-in closet. The final, 68-51, to Spencerville getting the win over Audeville for Dave Bowen and our entire WOSN staff. I'm Patrick Kamler saying... Have a happily ever after. <laughs>